the bowel movements that I produce are just too grand for the amount of paper you gave me, and I need more. Here we go. Welcome to Privy, everybody. Um, this week we are on location. I am not in my home, Privy, uh, which is just fine. We're doing something different this week. Um, so Privy is a podcast about toilets, bathrooms, and that type of thing. Uh, and it's recorded from a toilet on top of a toilet. And like I said, this week I'm not at my home toilet. Uh, I'm actually using a space um, that is at the church I work at. So uh, this one does not have a lid or a seat cover, and so there is about eight to eh, probably six to eight inches uh, between my pants and water. Um, and so it's not that high stakes. Like no one's gonna flush this noise until the end of the episode. But like there is, it's kind of like Mission Impossible. I'm hanging ham or hanging covered ham over top of a lake right now and it's it's a little bit different um but you know privy is recorded from a toilet uh and record from a toilet i shall uh so uh, one of the things that has come up is i have never really talked uh about who i am uh and who i am is going to come up a little bit later because we had an email from someone who listened to an episode last year and we never really got around to reading it um, but just to give you a little bio, my name is Hunter Hoover. Um, you know, I grew up in Montana. Now I live in Oregon. Uh, uh, went to school to do ministry, work with teenagers, and working with teenagers is kind of my jam. Uh, and I found that potty humor never gets old. And so um, over time, I've had way too many. And as I'm talking to some of the people that I work with, I'm realizing that I have way, way too many stories about toilets and bathrooms and the heinous things that go on in them. I'm also a janitor, which I've shared. Uh, and so I also have the astute privilege of cleaning up after those uh, terrible, horrible, awful things sometimes. Um, and so the reason I started doing this podcast was because I, somebody had said something about it in or related to modern medicine, and they had made a comment that they feel extremely um, privileged and very blessed to live in a period of history where we have access to so much good medicine or medicine that is so effective. Um, and personally, like I equate that to, um, yeah, us as a human race being allowed to make those discoveries. But I started to think about that in relationship to bathrooms and we live in a time in history where, I mean, I'm sitting here in this bathroom uh, where I work and like I've got two rolls of toilet paper. There's a dispenser that literally will kick out paper towel at the wave of my hand. And there's also a manual soap dispenser. Like we're living in the best times. We don't have to bury our dookie, um, at least in this country. We don't have to do that. We have toilets. We have privies. And we get to use them. We have running water. We are truly blessed. And so it's out of that thankfulness that Privy kind of first got its um, its start. Uh, and so today's topic actually comes uh, as a recommendation from a listener. I mentioned um, this email came to privycast at gmail.com if you want to write in uh, with your comments or even uh, episode suggestions or just potty thoughts. Everybody's got good potty thoughts. Um, but this one was written in by uh, a professor of mine uh, when I was in school at Corbin, uh, and he he wrote in actually to over almost almost a full year ago. So sorry, Doctor Troll. Uh, here I am, a full year later, getting to your email on the podcast. Um, we'll get to the end here. So it says, "I look forward to see how you will digest considerable research on water closets." and pass on nuggets of knowledge to us all. Good alliteration. Um, I hope you can squeeze, squeeze, in the time for this extra work. It can be tough to be creative in a pinch. Suggestions for future broadcasts, and this is what brings us up to our topic today. Uh, courtesy flushes, not what we're doing today, under the divider paper sharing. That's what we're going to do. Uh, an appropriate bathroom conversation topic. We're 
we're talking about what do you do when you run out of toilet paper. This is a survival guide for running out of toilet paper, and it's this idea um, that what what do we do? There's nothing much worse than when you're um, out and about and you you have recently dropped brown and now you need to wipe and there's nothing there. You reach for your, your paper friend and there's no paper friend to comfort you and you're sad and you're upset and what can you do about it? So let's set the stage. I want to set the stage and set some ground rules. So we're assuming first that we are not barbarians uh, and that you intend to wipe yourself after you have made leavings. And the reason I say that is because if for some insane reason you think well you know what i'm not going to put in any effort to wipe myself i'm just gonna you know hike those bad boys right back up and let brown meat cloth and just roll out um no we don't do that that's not an acceptable thing that we're going to tolerate um i mean well i think i think you get there in a pinch if you have to but as we're going to see today there are a lot of different things that you can do that will serve as good options for you before you have to just sully yourself. So um, we're going to assume that in the situations that we will be describing, you had toilet paper on hand and you started the process. And now, for some reason, you have run out and you were not done with the wiping portion of your bathroom trip. So you've begun the process. You have finished the drop, you, the package delivered. And now you need to wipe up that zone and you reach for the toilet paper and it is there and it's there and it's there and now it's not and you're out. So this is a survival guide for when you run out of toilet paper and the first and most easiest, that's bad English. I'm sorry. I started this episode kind of by saying that I had a professor in college and then I just used the phrase most easiest. Anyway, uh, so the easiest scenario is this. You're home alone and you're out of sheet. You're out of wipe. Uh, and I say home alone because if you are not home alone, like if you're at home and there's somebody out beyond the far reaches of the bathroom door on the other side, hello from the other side, obviously you're just going to shout it out. Duh. It's easy. Just shout out, say, hey, <laughs> I need an assist. Please bring me another role. And, you know, I'm assuming that the person that you live with presumably cares about you. They will come in for the save. They will bail you out. If they are good to you, they will bail you out. And if they don't or won't, may God have mercy on their souls. That's all there is to it. Like if, no, if you're not going to bail somebody out when they're calling in an audible because they need an extra role, you're just, you're just not nice. And that's not okay. That's unacceptable. Um, but if you are home alone, meaning there is not a homie at which you can call, holler out to, um, and if you have more TP somewhere in your home, you need to figure out how to get yourself there and get it. And now this becomes kind of like you're in your own home. So it's, it's I mean, I think it's perfectly acceptable to be naked uh, and, and or not naked, but even it's just bottomless as you go find toilet paper. But the problem is, is you don't want to dribble drop some, some plooby plop. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to, you don't want to accidentally plop down some brown while you're on your way to grab some extra toilet paper that's not great um and so if if the absolute worst case scenario if you're like really worried about it and you're thinking oh man you know i've run out and i think there's still too much brown on my booty to get to where the toilet paper is at i mean we at my home we keep like a a big costco size bundle pack within arm's reach of my toilet this ain't happening to me I'm not going to get into this problem at home. It ain't going to happen. No way. Not a chance. But if you're not that way um, and you don't have toilet paper in the home, God forbid, first of all, don't don't start the pooping process and not have toilet paper in your home. That's a recipe for disaster. But not too bad of a disaster because we'll also assume that you have running water and there is usually a shower within a couple footsteps di distance between between you and it and the toilet. And that's the most complicated way I can say, just get in the shower and take a shower. Let the water do what the water does and run all that nasty, foul mess away. Get it gone. But what if you're home and you're pooping and you've run out of paper and you're in a time crunch and you don't have time for a shower? To that I say, get a different paper product. Get a white bag. Use use a garbage bag and flip it inside out and 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 take that stuff outside. Whatever you do, you cannot flush it. 
do not flush paper products that are not flushable toilet paper. Don't do that noise. But put it in a bag and remove it and take it out to the dumpster. Do not put it in a different trash can inside your home. That's disgusting. That's foul. Don't do that. Take it all the way outside and, and remove that. You want to get rid of all the evidence of the shameful thing that you just did. So get rid of it. And I think when we run out of toilet paper, we aren't really concerned with what we're going to do in our own homes. That's not the problem. The problem is not happening inside the walls of our domicile. They're, they're concerned with what happens if we're in public and we run out of our essential toilet assistant, our paper friend, who, you know, I think of, I think of Mike Rowe on Dirty Jobs. He's like, it's a dirty job and somebody's got to do it. Like, that is our toilet paper. It's a dirty job and our toilet paper is going to have to do it. So what do we do when we're in public? Um, and, and usually in public, like I told you, I'm not, I'm not at home right now. So I'm technically in public, but there's nobody else here. Um, man, I can't imagine recording this with just people at hand. Um, however, if we're lucky, we'll, we'll have somebody stumble on in. Who knows? It could happen. Assuming that you are in a multi-stall pooping center, this lends to two key scenarios accompanied and unaccompanied and both of these lend themselves to a world of awkward situations risks and potential scarring moments in your life so prepare yourself because if you're socially awkward or if you have some sort of a barrier of social awkwardness around things in the bathroom strap in because it's social awkward hour and we're we're diving into the deep end first we're going to tackle the accompanied this is you are in a public pooping center bathroom and it has a divider or a stall, and you are down in with a buddy. There's somebody in a different stall or even just outside the stall, maybe at the sink or at the urinal if you're in a uh, restroom for people who need to stand to pee. Um, and there's this first, like, almost rule that I want this whole, like, survival guide to keep in mind. We need to help one another out. 2020 was rough. 2021, it's, you know, we're two weeks in and it's, you know, there's not a lot of confetti firing off so far. And so we need to help one another out. You've ran out of wipe and you hear the presence of another entity, someone outside your box of private leavings. And it's the moment of truth. And if all goes to plan, you'll get that sweet, sweet TP and never have to meet that person in person. You'll never have to see face and they will never have to see this person that has ran out of paper. They won't have to interact with you. Um, so that's a perfect world. Uh, so you've run out. It's the moment of truth. You say it. Hey, brother or sister, uh, I've run out of toilet paper. Could you get me the roll from one of the other stalls? Or if they are also doing the deed on the, the wall of secrets, uh, that divides you and they, ask them to pass that noise under the divider. It's totally acceptable. To answer your question, Dr. Troll, absolutely acceptable. Pass that paper under. It's totally fine. And if you make it weird, if you, you know, if somebody, and I'm not talking to you now, Dr. Troll, you know, I know you ain't going to make it weird. Um, but, it, but if somebody makes it weird, that shame on you. You're, you're both pooping. Or if you're in the stall, you're in a place where somebody should or could or normally would be pooping. So it's totally fine. Let it be. Let it ride. I think soliciting this will almost always produce toilet paper. Like, I genuinely don't believe that there are very many situations where you run out of TP and you solicit from... Man, I'm going to make another side joke. From the other side. I'm from the other side. Uh, you, you know, I, I don't think there's very often that you're going to solicit that. And the person on the other side just starts laughing maniacally and says, tough luck, bud. You're going to have to scramble now. Um, that's just not going to happen. You're going to get some help a homie out, get him a roll because one day you're going to need this help. So don't, don't withhold the toilet paper and make sure that when you pass toilet paper, that you're passing enough paper that you would need to get the job done. Don't give them like a sheet of six pieces because then they're going to be barking at you in like 30 seconds. Hey, can you hook a homie up? Uh, you didn't give me enough. And that's worse because now they have admitted, hey, 
the bowel movements that I produce are just too grand for the amount of paper you gave me, and I need more. I need more from you. It's also totally appropriate when you hand that under, if you are the one who is doing the passing, to just say, hey, uh, hey, friend, um, we're friends now, by the way, because if you're sharing toilet paper, that's friendship. Um, hey, friend, is this enough toilet paper for you? Like, would you like more? Can I can I please assist you in getting more? Please tell me now. Um, hey there, chap. I got you enough to wipe 10 more times. Is that enough? Like, uh, no, I'm going to need more. Uh, just kidding. So get them the toilet paper and feel free, I guess, to judge, but keep it to yourself because everybody has their own problems that they're dealing with and you don't need to just, just give them the toilet paper. Um, next is God forbid that tyrant decides that they are too good or too stuck up or too whatever to get you the TP. Shame on them. And I would like to remind you of the golden rule, which says, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. If you just defecated and didn't have sheet to wipe and asked someone to fetch it and they declined, you would be furious. You also have a dirty butthole. And rightfully so. Because there's no reason for them to not help you. There's no reason for you to not help somebody else. Help one another out. 2021. Help each other. Hook a brother up. If you have received aid, there might be some apprehension to encounter your guardian brown wipe supplier angel. And that's totally fine. It can be awkward to have just received toilet paper under the super secret divide and now maybe have to face that person when you leave when you leave the area. And that's that's understandable. I get that. But I mean, wait until you hear them leave. It's that easy. Like wait until you hear them exit the bathroom, and once you have flush and wipe and be on our way uh, so it's cool and if you do see them a simple hey thank you 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 really bailed me out you really saved the day right there um it's enough you know the you don't need to pay them it's it's toilet paper another social barrier could be having to handle something someone else in the bathroom has touched um but but here's the trick you're taking a poop so if you're getting ready to place your hand mere millimeters from your poop hole and wipe feces out of it, if accepting just this salacious toilet paper from a stranger is a problem, you shouldn't be using public bathrooms. You just shouldn't. Because the reality is, is what, you know, I mean, yes, they haven't washed their hands. Just don't touch your face. Don't touch anything besides the toilet paper, your wiping system and the flusher and then go wash your hands it's totally fine the next scenario here so that is a company the next scenario is unaccompanied if no one is in the restroom what do we do well uh, i hope you've seen mission impossible because you have just received your orders you pull your trow up as much as you can without getting near the poop and you shimmy to the next stall um flush first of all before you begin your shimmying flush before you leave and then just stay in the new stall. So when you are shimmying, the goal is to get to where the toilet paper is. When you have arrived to where the toilet paper is, stay where the toilet paper is. Do not grab toilet paper and return to where you once ran out of toilet paper. That makes no sense. Just stay in the new one. Flush before you leave and stay in the new one. That new stall is stocked with TP and has all the same amenities as your previous stall. So go there and stay there. It's easy. And I think that's common sense. And I think there's this notion, yeah, just stay where you are. If, God forbid, someone sees you making the sunshine shimmy to the next stall, just just hide until they're gone. Like, okay, so this is it. You've done it. You've flushed. You're, you know, you've know, you got half ham. You don't want to pull it up because you ain't got enough toilet paper. And you begin just the shimmy with the pants half down. And somebody comes in the bathroom and they catch you doing this awkward, strange bathroom dance. Just get into the stall. Chill out there and wait until you hear them leave the bathroom. And it's cool. It's fine. I mean, if you really want to be safe, I guess you can give it enough time to where you think they could have left the store. Because the awkward part is not seeing them in the bathroom. Sky's the limit in the bathroom. Anything goes. It's dealer's choice. But some things you can unsee. The scrape comes when you encounter that person in the wild of the store no longer half trow, hams fully tucked away, 
And there's some things you can't unsee. Be cool. If you see someone doing the shimmy, you're sworn to secrecy within the walls of the bathroom. If you've seen, just keep your eyes down. Now we enter the dark zone. The unfathomable. Unfathomable. Un. Okay. The unfathomable. Unfathomable has happened. You poop. No top, no TP in your stall. No homie on the outside to assist. You do the shimmy of shame. This stall is out too. No toilet paper. Assuming the bathroom does not have a paper towel dispenser, now you get to do what the folks in the biz call improvise. So, a quick note. If paper towel is available, feel free to go for it. But you cannot flush that. I repeat. Privy hard stance. Do not flush paper towel. That clogs and ruins septic and sewer, and you're a fiend if you flush paper towel. You deserve whatever comes to you for it. As a janitor, I've cleaned too much paper towel out of toilet to stand idly by and not have a stance on this. We do not flush paper towel. If there's a trash, go for that. If not, you should not use the paper towel. You should be braver than that. So now what? No toilet paper, no homies, no paper towel. Say hello to your friend, Mr. Sock. It's time to go barefoot and never look back. This is, or this or just streak your undies and don't wipe. It's your choice, but socks can be cheap and I vote use the sock. But I can't, I can't stress this enough. This is like, this is like privy running out of toilet paper pro tip. Number one, a pro tip that I myself, Hunter Hoover, do not follow. Take something spare. Bring some spare toilet paper, maybe some tissues in your pocket. You know, roll in there with that. If, I mean, yeah. Take something spare. In short, if you run out of toilet paper, consult your fellow fellow bathroom traveler. It, it's fine. Get aid from where aid is easiest to get. Then seek out toilet paper on your own, knowing that being caught between the safety of two stalls could be a barrier for re-entering the store. Like, it. It's just part of life. It's going to happen. And finally, if all else fails, go rogue. Take the sock off. You know, I streak it, I guess, but I, that's like last, last ditch. Nobody wants, nobody wants mud booty while you have to shop. I hope this helps. Um, it's always okay to ask for help. Uh, just do it. It's better than having mud crack and all the wonders that that brings. Uh, and this, this is by no means not a comprehensive guide. Um, if you fellow traveler of of bathrooms have your own pro tips for how to handle when you've run out of toilet paper um shout at us at social media at privy cast uh if you want a hashtag you can you can use hashtag like out of tp um that'll be fun we'll see what we get on that thanks again to dr troll for recommending the topic uh about sharing tp in a restroom and if you share your tp you're a hero plain and simple that's all there is to it if you share the toilet paper with a, with a fellow bathroom traveler, you're a hero and you deserve to be recognized as such. Um, if you're interested and you want to just look at all the garbage Pokemon Go stuff I'm doing, you can follow me. I'm at Alet7 on most things. This has been Privy. Hopefully you guys have found some tips and tricks for uh, surviving if you run out of toilet paper. Um, I hope it's helped. I hope you don't run out of toilet paper. Life's hard enough. Uh, we don't we don't need to be doing that. Hit us up if you have any comments. Our new intro and outro music is Barroom Ballet by Kevin McLeod. You can find his music on incompetech.com. He's licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 4.0 license, creativecommons.org licensed by 4.0. Thanks, Kevin. And as always, folks, don't forget to flush. <laughs>